Thanks, Kirk and Lloyd, and welcome to the sanctuary of Redeemer Lutheran Church on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. How are you today? Blessed. All right. I am also. It's good to be in the house of the Lord to join together in worship. Jesus healed a deaf mute by taking him aside and touching him and speaking the command to be opened. He does the same with us. He gets personal with us. He touches us with his word. He touches us with his sacraments and opens us up. He opens us up to himself. And when we're open to him, we then become open to one another, to those who are around us, open to those who are need, in need, open to the world. And we become vessels, vessels through which the love of Christ flows. The psalmist writes these words. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. We now come into his presence as we join together in singing our opening hymn, God Himself is Present. Kirk will lead.
Please stand as you're able. Turn to page three in your worship folder as we make our beginning today with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, we gather as your children. You have called us to be your people and have claimed us as your own. When we had gone our own way, you sent your Son to redeem us. He opened us to your love and restored us from our isolation. We again hear your word and see your goodness and worship you in the name of Jesus and the power of his Spirit. Amen. We now confess our sin and our sinfulness before God our Father trusting in his desire to forgive. Father, there is much to confess. We are close to your will and isolated from your love, we are deaf to your word and to the cries of those in need. We do not seek grace, love, and joy into the lives of those around us. We are cut off and alone. Speak your word to us. Open us to your spirit. Enter our isolation and restore us to you. My friends, God reached into our lives with his Son and his Spirit, seeking to restore us to himself. In the death death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God opens us to his power and redeems us as his children. In the cross and empty tomb, we are forgiven, and in the power of the Spirit, we hear the word of God and speak his love. To us, God has said, Ephatha, and we are opened. You may be seated for the hymn of praise.
Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, starting at verse 4. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution, he will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mule Mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from James, the second chapter. My brothers, As believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. Listen, my dear brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are standing slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong. If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbors as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin, and you are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, but have, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about the physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith itself It is not, if not accompanied by actions, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. This is the word of the Lord. In honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, let's stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which today is recorded in the 7th chapter of Mark, beginning at the 24th verse. He left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an and was a great born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out from her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, Jesus told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs are Oh, the demon. 
daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said, Ephetha, which means be opened. <coughs> At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. All right, my young friends. I hope you can see this. I placed a line on the floor right here. Have you ever had that happen? Someone draws a line in the sand and they say, don't cross that line. Sometimes the line might be imaginary. Like when mom and dad say, Stop that, don't do it again. They're drawing a line and they're saying, don't cross that line. And that happens in our world today. Well, Jesus in our reading, in the gospel reading a little bit ago, crossed the line. Can you believe it? He sat, he spoke to a woman, a Syrian, Syrio-Phoenician woman. She wasn't a Jew, she was a woman. Good Jewish men weren't supposed to do that, but Jesus stepped over that line. And he spoke to that woman, and he healed her daughter. You know, Jesus was always stepping over the line when he was in our world with us. He stepped over the line when he came into our world. You pick the end of that up for me? Thank you. Stepped in. I dropped it. Thank you. As a little baby, he came into our world. And then he healed us. And he had dinner with poor people and sinners. And little by little, Jesus took that line, stay right there, and he didn't just step over it, but Jesus erased that line. And pretty soon, there was no line between us and God. Our sin drew a line between us and God. But when Jesus died on the cross, he took that line away. And now, there is no division between us and God. Because Jesus is our mediator. He brings Dear Jesus, thank you for erasing the line between us and your Heavenly Father and for making us able to come to him in prayer and in thought and in love. In, Je in Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, we continue now with our hymn of the day. Kirk is just dying to get up here and lead you in it. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing.
to you, my dear friends, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text today is the gospel text, and it's one of those texts that just kind of reaches out and grabs you, kind of gets your attention. I mean, the idea of Jesus sticking his fingers in someone's ears, well, that just strikes me as very out of character for Jesus. And then there's that deal with the spitting. What's that all about? I mean, if you went to a doctor or a dentist office today and the doctor stuck their fingers in their mouth before they stuck them in your ear, in your mouth, what would you think? You'd be mortified. And these days we even have to wear masks and have our temperature taken just to go to the doctor. Well, I don't think the reaction of people 2,000 years ago would have been much different about those things than it would have been today. It's kind of weird and uncharacteristic of Jesus. But you know what I've learned over the years? I've learned that when you come across something in Scripture, something in seems odd or out of place or just doesn't really make sense to us, we should really pay attention to it because chances are God is trying to tell us something that's very important. And yet in other ways this miracle just seems kind of run of the mill for a miracle anyway. Jesus comes across this man who's deaf and dumb, and he restores him. He heals him. Heals him out of his love and out of his mercy. Jesus' big miracle, 5,000, or, or when he raised Lazarus from the dead. And then, if you look at the Old Testament reading from Isaiah today, the one that Joanne read a few minutes ago, this miracle is certainly a fulfillment of that prophecy. Did you catch it? Isaiah wrote, Be strong and do not fear, your God will come. Then will the eyes of the blind be open and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Certainly, Mark is trying to tell us that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation, that Jesus is the Savior that the world has been waiting for, and that he came into this world make things right. He came into this world to restore us. He came into this world to 
reunite us with our God. He came to open us back up to the one who created us, the one who created us in his very own image. Did you notice the creation language at the end of this text? It says, the people were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done all things well. and all of his righteousness and all of his power saw that it was good. God made us perfectly without flaw. And then we threw it all away. All the perfection of God's creation was ruined. And man's relationship with God, man's relationship with his creator was totally broken, completely severed in two. Man's relationship with his fellow man has been at odds ever since. Even God's ultimate creation, the man and the woman that he formed out of the dust of the earth, the one to whom he gave dominion over his entire creation, now... In God's eyes, we were as good as dead, as are we, the children of Adam and Eve, who came from him. God made us in perfection, and our parents chose corruption. God made us to live with him forever, and we were more interested in a piece of fruit. God made us to live in harmony with our fellow human beings. And now we kill and cheat and steal and lie and gossip. And the result of all that is that we're Closed off. Closed off to God and His love. And this man from the region of the Decapolis was also in a closed off station state. He was closed off by the silence of his ears. <coughs> closed off. <coughs> Excuse me. Closed off by his muteness, by the silence of his mouth, closed off from his family, closed off from his friends, closed off from society. And there was not one thing that that man could do about it. Not one thing that he could do to change his closed off state. He was completely dependent on something outside of him to release his tongue to open his ears. And that's our spiritual condition also. There's nothing we can do. Nothing we can say. Nothing we can think about that will possibly remove the curse of that first sin and all the sin that's happened Something, nothing we can do to remove the curse of the grave. Nothing we can do to remove death's hold on us. Because we have a hearing problem. More than that, we're totally deaf. Not just a problem. We cannot hear God's word. We're not ready to believe anything that doesn't make sense to us because we hold ourselves in such high esteem. You see, it doesn't make sense to us that one man's death 
paid the price for the sins of the world. It doesn't make sense to us that a man rose from the dead. It doesn't make sense to us that we don't have to somehow redeem ourselves or earn our own salvation by living a good life and doing good things. What's worse than that, <coughs> not only are we unable to listen to God's word, but instead we choose to listen to others' words. We listen to the words of the world around us. We listen to the words of our friends. as long as it lines up with what we think. We don't ask God to tell us the truth. Instead, we ask ourselves, we ask others. If the Bible talks about sin or money or gender roles or sexuality, and we don't agree, we simply say, or we say that it doesn't apply anymore in our culture. We can't hear words yet. We don't want to hear God's word. And yet Jesus stepped into our world with his personal touch. He pulls us aside from the crowd speaks to us in our personal devotions, speaks to us when you hear the word of God on Sunday morning, speaks to us in our Bible studies. He asks us to listen to his word because he has a message for us. His message is, I am. I am. We don't have the right, nor do we have the power, nor do we have the authority to question God. We don't have the ability to make our word greater than God's word. And he condemns us. He tells us that if we continue to listen only to ourselves, only to the world, only to Satan, then we'll suffer forever in the throes of hell. And he asks us to come to him, to confess our sin. And when we do, he has a beautiful message for us. He has a healing message for us. He says, after thought, be opened. And he tells us that as our Savior, he has restored us. He has opened us back up to God's love. Because in our place, Jesus perfectly listened to God the Father's word. In our place, Jesus died on the cross, taking the punishment that we owe and on to himself. Taking the punishment for rejecting, for us rejecting God's word. And in our place, he won our forgiveness. That good news of forgiveness opens our ears and suddenly we hear Jesus and we want to hear Jesus and we want to hear nothing but Jesus Jesus words open up our ears but more importantly <clears throat> they open us up to speak God's love to those around us. 
God touches us in a very personal way each and every day. He touches us with his word. He touches us with water and the holy baptism of the thought. He puts his arm around us and adopts us into his family, makes us one of his own, his own dear child. Promises to wash away our sins and to bring us home, home to heaven. He touches us with his word, with his body and blood, and he offers us <clears throat> the bread and wine of Holy Communion. And in that gift, he lets us touch taste and smell the forgiveness that he has won for us on Calvary's cross. See, Jesus doesn't open our eyes with a magic wave of his hand, with some magic potion that he gives us to drink. He opens us up with his word and with his personal touch for us. He opens our ears to hear the right words, to hear his word. And then he opens our mouths so that we can sing his praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able and turn to page 7 in your worship folders as we join together in affirming our faith in the triune God and the words that are printed there. I believe in God the Father, who created a perfect universe, open to his law. As the pinnacle of creation, he created man and woman and proclaimed them bearers of his image. They lived in perfect peace, hearing his voice and speaking his love into everything around them. Then they sinned, and the world closed. No longer could we hear, and no longer could we speak. We turned inward and lived in fearful isolation from God and from each other. I believe in God the Son, Jesus Christ, sent from the Father into our closed world. Jesus listened to the Father, and spoke his truth and grace and love into the lives of those around him, but most chose not to hear. He was crucified for the sins of those he came to save. On the third day he rose again, opening the tomb. believe in God the Holy Spirit, sent by the Father and the Son. The Spirit breathes into us, and we are made new. He speaks into our hearts, and our lives are opened. He brings us to faith and continues to work in us, empowering us to hear the Word of God and to speak His love and joy into everything around us. I believe that I am a new creature in Christ alive and open and hearing and speaking in peace and joy. Amen. You may be seated. The offering receptacle is located in the back right there by Wayne. If you brought a gift for the food pantry on this first Sunday of the month, you can either place it on the chancel steps sometime or on the cart that's in the narthex. We now can continue with the prayers of God's people. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant us a living faith in your Son, 
our Lord Jesus Christ. Though sin and Satan would stop up our hearts and ears, open them so that we hear your word of life and salvation. Make it to heart, <clears throat> make, take it to heart and acknowledge your commands and speak plainly your words of truth to all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, on this Labor Day weekend, bless all honest and faithful labor, leisure and rest, and the arts and culture of our people. Provide for all who are unemployed or underemployed. Take your special protection to those, <clears throat> take, your, take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, make the presence of Jesus known among those who are ill or in pain, including our friends Maggie Cattell, Brandon Cooper, Geraldine Holland, Jean Moore, Roger Chapman, and Amber Shaw Woods. Bring them your gifts of healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for our nation and for those who defend it, guide and protect our government leaders and the members of our military who guard and defend us each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Because you have made us our brother's keeper, fill us with care for the members of our earthly families, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we especially lift up those who are celebrating birthdays in the coming week. Haley Patterson, and James Metzmeyer. Strengthen us to live together in harmony and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as your Son again provides his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, give sincere faith in his word and promises to all who receive them, so that we commune with glad confidence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please turn to page six and stand as you are able, as we continue now with the communion liturgy. <coughs> God sent his Son to open us to his power. In him we hear his word and speak his love. The Lord be with you. <coughs> Let us pray. <coughs> Father, it is our delight to offer you our praise at all times and in all places. For you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to open us to your love. In his death and resurrection, we are no longer separated from you or from those around us. Through his spirit, our ears can again hear your word and our tongues offer you praise. We praise you as we prepare to receive your gifts to us, especially your grace that comes through the body and blood of Jesus received in, with, and under these forms of bread and wine. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you drink it in memory of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. 
I welcome you to the Lord's table.
Turk take and eat the very body of Christ, given into death for you. Please stand for prayer as you're able. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have renewed us by the body and blood of Jesus. Empower and energize us to serve our neighbors in faith toward you and in fervent love toward all people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and fill you with his peace, both today and tomorrow and into eternity. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. All right, blessings to you on this Labor Day weekend. Community festival is coming up. Does anybody know when that's going to be? <laughs> yeah, October 2nd. Um, CGF and Sunday School resume next week after the service, so please plan to join us for that. For the uh, Community Festival and Health Fair, we have a need for empty rinsed milk jugs to be used as uh, tent anchors. We're going to fill them with water, so save your empty milk jugs, rinse them out, and bring them in. Fill them up with water before you bring them in. That'd save somebody else doing it. That'd be great. We're going to need probably at least 60 or 70 of them, so um, save them up. Uh, the fellowship have, speaking of labor, the fellowship floor has been refreshed, and if you can stay for a bit to help move the tables and chairs back in there, many hands would make the task light. And on this Labor Day weekend, we here at Redeemer give thanks for our laborers, Lloyd, and Ellen, who faithfully service each day of the year. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Our closing hymn is Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Kurt. Thank you. 